Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new lecture of our course on heterogeneous systems. Today, we are going to cover a new parallel pattern, histogram calculation. Before we go into the details, let's very quickly recap what we covered in the previous lecture, the reduction operation. A reduction is an operation that reduces a set of values to a single value. It has certain properties, associativity, commutativity, and an identity value. Remember that we explain how to implement a tree-based reduction on GPU. We typically, what we typically do is dividing the input array into different chunks that are assigned to different thread blocks. And inside each thread block, we assign different parts to uh, different warps. Each warp will obtain a partial reduction result that will be further reduced into a, a per block partial result. After some interblock synchronization, we will end up having the final reduction result. There are uh, a naive way of uh, implementing the vector reduction that may end up having a lot of uh, warp divergence or SIMD underutilization, which is not good for performance. For that reason, we also explain a divergence-free mapping where the active threads belong all to the same warp or to uh, multiple uh, different warps while the reduction is uh, making progress. This way, we have higher SIMD utilization and in the end, higher performance. Remember as well that we talk about atomic operations as a way of implementing reduction, or at least uh, the final uh, reduction. Atomic operations are very useful because they perform read, modify, write operations atomically, and they can be applied to shared memory or global memory locations. Uh, there are arithmetic functions, like for example, add and sub, and here you can see the syntax of an atomic add. This is the pointer to shared memory or global memory, this is the value to add, and it will be returned the old value. There are also bitwise functions like AND, OR, and XOR, and different data types. You can check all the details in the CUDA programming guide. Atomic operations are very useful because they guarantee correct execution, but they serialize the execution when there are atomic conflicts. For example, if we have two threads in the same warp that need to update two different memory locations using an atomic operation, then we will be fine. It will be, it will be just a certain latency. But if these two threads need to update the same memory location, the accesses will be serialized and the latency will be longer because we have basically an atomic conflict. Atomic operations are useful for different purposes. For example, for computation, when we use them on the array that is the output of the kernel, for example, in reduction, as we discussed in the previous lecture, or in histogram calculation, as we are going to do today. And they can be used for synchronization or coordination uh, across different threads or thread blocks. For example, uh, using counters or locks or flags. In the end, they are very useful to prevent data races when more than one thread need to update the same memory location. We are going to use them today for the histogram computation. A histogram is a data structure that is used for reducing the dimensionality and extracting notable features and patterns from large data sets. It's used in image processing, in fraud detection, and in other fields as well. Uh, in a basic histogram, what we basically do is that for each value in the possible value in the input elements, we identify a bin. And this bin has a counter associated that we increment every time that we find that corresponding value in the input. So basically what we do is dividing the input value range into bins, and then we associate a counter to each bin. And then for each input element, we check its value and we uh, uh, determine what's the bin uh, that it falls into and increment the corresponding counter. The sequential co uh, uh, histogram computation is pretty simple. We just need to go one by one over the elements of the input and update the corresponding histograms, hosting histogram bins. For example, if this is our input and this is the histogram and we have a single thread because it's a sequential uh, uh, computation, the thread will go one by one, iteration by iteration, reading one element of the input and updating, incrementing the corresponding counter, the corresponding bin. It will go to the next element, then the next element, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And the code for the histogram, <clears throat> the sequential histogram computation will be something like this. 
uh, we just have a, a while loop, it could be also a for loop to go over all the elements of the input. Uh, the thread reads each input value and then uh, increments the corresponding bean of the histogram. How, we, how should we do a parallel histogram computation? Uh, that it's, uh, it's good to try a parallel implementation here because there are many elements to process at the same time, but we should be, we should be careful when we have more than one worker or more one than one thread trying to update the same uh, histogram beans. Let's uh, see how uh, we could do this uh, with, for example, four threads. Observe that the good thing is that um, uh, when the threads start reading from the input array, the, the accesses are going to be coalesced because consecutive threads are going to access consecutive memory locations of the input, and then they will go to the corresponding bean and increment the corresponding counter. Uh, we could write this uh, parallel histogram kernel in CUDA. And uh, first, of, first of all, we are going to have a, a global thread uh, index that is, uh, uh, that is uh, a function of the block index and the uh, thread index inside the thread block. And then uh, we also have a stride that is the total number of threads. This is in case we are not using as many threads as pixels or uh, values we have uh, in the input array. Um, so, and then again, we have a while loop and we go uh, one by one over all the threads go uh, over these uh, chunks of consecutive elements, uh, reading the uh, input values and then updating the corresponding histogram bin. Uh, then uh, we will increment the in, the in the index by a stride in order for the threads to go to the next chunk of the input. But there is a problem with this uh, code, with this kernel, that's why it's wrong. And we can see it in this um, example. What would happen here is that we have two of the threads, in this case, thread zero and thread three, that want to update the same histogram being at the same time. The problem is that this incurs in a data race and that's why we will get a wrong or we may get a wrong result. And that's why we need to use atomic operations here. So the way of writing this code, this kernel code correctly is replacing this instruction with the corresponding atomic operation. This way the um, execution might be serialized, but there is a guarantee that the corresponding histogram beans will be updated atomically and we are preventing these uh, data races. Histograms are very much used in different fields. For example, in image processing, uh, if we have a, an, an image with uh, hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions of pixels, we will have uh, consecutive threads accessing consecutive pixels and then updating the corresponding histogram beans in the same way we have seen in the previous slide. But when we are processing natural images, it might turn out that we will end up having frequent atomic conflicts. One reason for that is the spatial similarity of the pixel value distribution uh, in natural images. For example, if we look at the face of this monkey, we will see that many of the pixel values are pretty similar. And in fact, some of them might be exactly the same. So these will end up in atomic conflicts when these two threads try to act, uh, update the same histogram beam. So we need ways or we need to uh, come up with ways of optimizing these uh, executions. And one idea is to use privatization, which basically consists of uh, using multiple subhistograms in order to reduce the frequency of atomic conflicts. By the way, in the past, I used a different image here that might not be so appropriate these days. I apologize about that if you see it in a previous lecture, and I hope that you like the new image now. So let's talk about privatization. Privatization is an optimization technique where multiple private copies of an output are maintained and then the global uh, copy is updated on completion. The requirement for privatization to work is that the operation needs to be associative and commutative, but that's the case of the addition that we need to use when we create a histogram, when we update the uh, counters, the, 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 the histogram beams. Advantages are that uh, privatization reduces the contention of the global copy, and uh, if the output is uh, small enough, we can place it in on cheap memories in the shared memory, which in the end will reduce the uh, latency of the atomic operation. Uh, 
Let's uh, take uh, another, uh, or let's take a look at this example of uh, privatization on this uh, toy image here. Uh, what uh, we are going to do is dividing the image into multiple chunks and each of them is assigned to a different thread block. And then each thread block will have its own subhistogram in, uh, in the shared memory. After the th uh, thread blocks have gone over the entire image and we have the uh, subhistograms uh, fin uh, completed, then we perform a parallel reduction in order to obtain the final histogram that will be in global memory. We can combine privatization with uh, coarsening. Coars in coarsening, we have each block processing several image chunks. For example, block zero is going to process these, 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 and this chunk of the image. The advantage of combining privatization with coarsening is that the parallel reduction will have to reduce a lower number of subhistograms because we are not using so many thread blocks and then I, and we will be fine as long as we are occupying the entire gpu core the entire gpu all gpu cores and another advantage as well is that we also don't have to initialize so many subhistograms so we can see uh, a performance improvement as well from using histogram um, uh, histogram privatization with coarsening uh, in the implementations on on gpus so um, if you want to take a look at the parallel histogram kernel with privatization and coarsening, it looks like this. First of all, uh, we declare the uh, thread index and the total number of threads, then the um, uh, private per block subhistogram that we need to initialize first, uh, synchronize after the initialization is done, and then we go to the main loop where the threads of each thread block compute the per block subhistogram. They read uh, input values and they update the corresponding histogram beans in the shared memory. After they, end, they are done with the subhistogram, then they synchronize and we do the final reduction. Observe that in this case, the final reduction is using atomic operations in global memory. Even though atomic operations to global memory are more costly than atomic operations in shared memory, this should still be fine because um, in the end, this last part is only going to be a negligible part of the entire um, execution time. Most of the time will be spent in this main loop. There are more ways of optimizing the use of uh, atomic operations, for example, using warp synchronous programming or warp synchronous primitives. We have already presented some of these, the warp shuffle functions that allow threads inside the same warp to exchange data. And we saw that there are different variants of these uh, shuffle functions. But there are other warp synchronous primitives, for example, the, for uh, to synchronize the threads that belong to the same warp, uh, to obtain a mask of the threads that are active at a certain point, or to um, uh, evaluate a certain predicate and see uh, if uh, these uh, the different threads of the warp pass the, the predicate or not. Uh, there are even more, for example, uh, this ballot returns a mask of threads that have passed through the predicate here, and there are also these uh, match all sync and match any sync that are uh, true for participating uh, when participating threads uh, are passing the same values. Uh, this is the code, the simplified code, it's not the simplified, this is the device code for the uh, coalesced atomic operations. The basic idea, I will leave this uh, here for your own study, but the basic idea in these coalesced atomic operations is that uh, different threads in the warp might need to update the same um, memory locations, either in shared memory or in global memory. You imagine that we have a warp with 32 threads and there are four of these threads that need to update uh, uh, being zero of the histogram. So what uh, we are going to do with these coalesced atomic operations is basically perform a local reduction among these four threads, obtain just a single value that will be the value uh, to add, to add to, uh, uh, for, for the update of the corresponding histogram being, and in the end, just a single uh, threat of the warp will do the atomic operation on that specific being where a, conf a conflict uh, would have happened. It's a way of optimizing a little bit further the use of atomic operations. This is all for today. If you want to read more, I recommend you uh, chapter nine uh, in the book Programming, pa uh, Paral uh, Programming Massively Parallel Processors. 
and uh, you can also watch uh, le longer lectures that uh, I have uh, delivered in the past. Uh, in this one, for example, you can also find a uh, longer explanation about atomic operations and how they have evolved over time, uh, atomic operations to shared memory and atomic operations to uh, global memory, as well as uh, a couple more optimizations for a histogram calculation. This is all for today. I hope you like the lecture and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you very much for your attention.